And now, another exciting episode in the adventures of Outdoor Journal Radio. Welcome to the show, everybody, and how exciting today's program is going to be on so many levels. You're pumped, uh, aren't you? You're I'm pumped, pumped first all of all, day about First this. of all, there's a couple of stories that I'm just absolutely dying to uh, chew on here in a moment, but more importantly, a very special friend of ours is going to be on the program a little later on. He was also a instrumental in the products that we know today as the Fishing Canada Show, as well as Outdoor Journal uh, Television and Outdoor Journal Radio. Come on now. And Correct. now he Correct. comes full circle. He's going to be a guest on Outdoor Journal Radio, the podcast. Give me a hell so, yeah. And, yeah. If you, and if you're a fan of Roland Martin show, he even works on Roland Martin's t- fishing show Boy, as well, not only so. does he work on that show, I dare he say good. he is that show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, no come on kidding. now. Uh, uh, big name and in, in, in our industry as far as fishing shows, outdoor shows, and a very good close personal friend of ours. So we're excited, as you can tell, he's coming on. Uh, but there's so much of this show. It, I, we're going to need a two-hour version, two-and-a-half-hour version of this for sure today. Yes. Uh, so we'll yes. blow right through and, the— and, and by the way, our guest, just for people to wait, our guest has got some very interesting uh, newer— uh, News. Uh, news in, in tourism and, and, yeah, just in tourism. For fishermen, Which, for hunters, for families, for— Everybody. Which is the main reason he's on the show today. He's promoting a new business of his. And and I think you're all going to be super excited yeah. about it. And, Pretty cool uh, idea. It's such a great uh, idea that's way overdue. Way overdue mm-hmm. as far as I'm concerned. Uh, before we get to any of that, I want to remind everybody, Fish in Canada uh, episodes, uh, the new ones are on uh, TV, as we say right now, uh, is season 38. Not sure what episode we're on in terms of numbers because it's all a big blur to us. Yes. Uh, but you do want to make sure you catch them while they are fresh. So later on in the year when you're saying, when's the new show's coming on? We don't have to say, well, they, 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 they aired already. What are you waiting for? Anyway, it's all happening on Global Television Network, coast to coast to coast, 8 a.m. except on the left coast, uh, 10.30 a.m. there. Uh, of course, once they're done with uh, the global preview, they are debut each week they go on sportsman's channel uh in canada and wfn world fishing network in the u.s uh look for times in your particular location for those of you especially south of the border uh you can find out we air four times a week on wfn so if you don't catch the first one you got three other uh opportunities before the new episode uh comes up and then once that Mm -hmm. happens that episode goes on youtube Following and it, Monday after the, every the Monday after the yep. Saturday, like that, and then the uh, article for that uh, will all come out, come out on Tuesday on fishingcanada.com yep. too. So and the hot spot on Wednesday and hot spot on Wednesday. Sorry, I forgot about that. Yeah, there you go. Are you serious? So, so the new series, new series, I got a, a text from uh, from Chris Hockley, our buddy Chris oh, Hockley. Yeah. Yes, he says new show. He's trying to figure out because everybody's talking about this new show. There's a new look to it. There's a new feel to it. There's something different about it, but they can't really tell, right? So he throws these things out. He says more drone work, including in the boat. He's, he's pretty wow. well right about, you know, wow. and, but maybe not so much in the boat, but yeah. Lens, Volvo, lens change in some shots. Is that, do wow. you use a different lens, Volvo? Yes, he got that right. 24 frames per second for cinematic look, maybe. Wow. No. Okay. A <laughs> couple of scripting changes. Uh, am I warming any of these? Chris, you're pretty much on a lot of them, buddy, just to let you know. So good eye. Good eye for seeing it. So people are noticing the new look of our, our show, and, uh, and we're happy that they are. Yeah, so. not to take up a whole lot of time on this, because we do want to get on to with the show, but uh, we pride ourselves in not being happy at any point with what we produce. And what I mean by that is that we're continually looking for ways to to up the ante, to, to change the game, to whatever you want to call it. We're, we never sit back on our laurels, uh, although some people might. I mean, I think the Fishing Canada show has accomplished more than any anybody in the industry would have ever dreamed of. Um, so it's pretty easy sometimes to get into that bit of a lull, but we don't here. Uh, every year we try and have at least one or two items that are totally new. And this year, I think uh, we've kind of hit the pinnacle. It's a nice feel to the show. We're all all very proud of it for sure from, you know, start to finish. So if you haven't caught it, uh, just tune in to global television network, Saturday mornings for those of you in Canada, uh, in the U S once again, look for, uh, the airings in your local, uh, listing on WFN and sportsman's channel as well. Come on now. 
All right. Uh, listener feedback, Mr. Bowman. What do we got? Listener feedback from Real, spelled R-E-E-L, efficient Real, Real Relaxing via Apple Podcasts. Love the banner between you two. Uh, also, enjoy the Q&A sessions. I would like to hear more stories on Manitoba, only because I'm from that province. And P.S., I'm also a Party Marty fan. Ah, yes! Party and- Marty! <laughs> Finally, yeah. somebody else. I'm not the only insane person on the planet. Uh, Party Marty, for those of you who don't know, is a, a, a guy who just basically teaches you how to play guitar songs. Not music, uh, not learning anything about music. He just has a guitar and he sits there and he shows you how to play a simple version of these really iconic songs. The ones that are really difficult. Yep. You know, Stairway to Heaven. And and all of these, really? cra- oh, he does all, and he does them in like three or four. Everything he does is G, C, and D. Nice. <laughs> he throws in the odd F. Have, not you ever, that, have you ever heard Roxanne? Does he do Roxanne he by does the police? Anything, really? I'm telling you, I got to see that one. I'm that's, telling you, that's got the craziest chords in reality. And, 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 he, and he, he doesn't. T- he tells you right off the bat. You know, this is not uh, talent here. I mean, this is breaking it down <laughs> as simple as you can get. I love it. it. But if you want to uh, uh, play these songs in your group or at a party, that's why he calls himself Marty Party you, or Party Marty. You got to check it out. So, anyways, um, we were way off topic. All Already hey, real relaxing though. Is it good? So is the Q and A. It means he's listening, right? Yeah, Party, for sure. Uh, real for relaxing sure. means he's listening because he knows you're a fan. So. so real relaxing. The truth of the matter is, we haven't done a lot in Manitoba. Here's what happens in this industry. Here's it's very simple, and um, I don't know whether we've come clean in the past or not, but we'll come clean now. Oh my! One uh, oh my! One <laughs> thank, the, you. Uh, thank you. Thank <laughs> you. Uh, part of the business model in not just ours, but all television fishing shows is that uh, you have to figure out how to monetize each and every episode. A lot of our episodes are monetized by a jurisdiction, meaning that a province or a tourism group or a economic development uh, office somewhere says, hey, we got to have the Fishing Canada guys here because it seems like when they come and shoot an episode here, things happen, right? And so there was a point in our lives where Manitoba wanted it all. And for a number of years, we were shooting in Manitoba. It seemed like every second episode, uh, we were depicting uh, scenes and locations in Manitoba. And then some of the other provinces started looking at it and saying, hey, wait a minute. How can we get on board too? And of course, Ontario was one that comes to mind. BC, Mm -hmm. uh, now uh, New Brunswick and Nova Scotia, Newfoundland. And so it's very cyclical. What's going to happen eventually? And Manitoba, by the way, kind of backed off at that point. Yeah, there was a point they just sort of backed right off and never came back. Do you remember the last time we worked with them, who their um, guy was? Brad that, or something? Some Brad guy? Or Maximus Mil- oh, right. Max. Million. Yeah. Max, Maximus, Max the million. <laughs> Maximus, Maximus Million was his name. Wow. And he worked for uh, Travel uh, Manitoba. Yeah. And anyways. It's too bad. we got to get back there. I mean, we'd love to get back there. Oh, for sure, man. It's, it's a great, great province, province. For, for great fishing. There's no doubt about it. So, But that's the long and short of it. We just have not had a relationship. And not only have we not had, but, you know, there's a finite amount of episodes that we can produce over the course of the season. And when they're all booked with other, other areas and provinces, then obviously there's no room for anybody yeah. else. So if you're listening... Manitoba. If you're listening and you're from Manitoba and need to have Manitoba back in the game, reach out to us. Yeah. Come on now. Well, actually, real. Why don't you, uh, a real relaxing? Why don't you contact your Manitoba tourism board or whoever's in charge these days there, and tell them, hey, it's high time we had the Fishing Canada boys back in town. We'll come back for sure. Yeah, come people, on now. People look very quickly. People are always asking, ah, oh, you guys have so many Ontario shows now. Ontario shows. Well, Ontario is one of our partners. <laughs> they decided to partner up with us. They're smart. So there you go. That's an yeah. explanation. Uh, the Podcast Network. A lot of people may not be aware of the fact that this very show, Outdoor Journal Radio Podcast, is also a network. And underneath that network, uh, or within that network, we have a number of titles. One of those titles is this one that you see behind me, Under the Canopy, by our good friend Jerry Wallet, former Minister of Natural Resources here in Ontario, actually. And then he got into this whole 
uh, chaga and uh, fungi and all of these great organic items that are available to us out in nature. And you got into identifying them all and, uh, and, and whatnot. And we brought them on as a host for a podcast that's doing extremely well. Uh, this uh, week or this month or whatever the case may be, uh, what we're <laughs> highlighting, month. right? I never know. It's always this uncomfortable. Week. Uh, no, it's every hard. week, every, every Monday week. he comes out. So every week, uh, apparently, every week now. And it's actually every day we have a different one coming yeah. out. Right. Yeah. Uh, every day with a different title. But anyways, this week we're highlighting um, the podcast uh, uh, about maple syrup. Episode number 30 for Jerry yep. is all about maple syrup. And who doesn't like maple syrup? <sighs> I love I I love good maple syrup. Don't be fooled. Jerry's going to be talking about good maple syrup. Don't buy that junk that you see in the in the grocery stores for four dollars a bottle or something like that. Spend the bucks on oh. good maple syrup. So money, you know, pure maple syrup. Yeah, it's going to cost you for sure. It's like wine. It's, it's you like you get wine. what you pay for. You for get sure. what like you wine. pay for yeah, with like maple wine, syrup. Right? This is very sure. similar to wine because wine. Uh, most of the good wines are either first run or second press wines and then when you get into the cheap wines they're third fourth and even fifth runs of wine. like that old triple x and 410 we used oh. to drink in high school back in the day <laughs> not that i did that but yeah Anyways, i remember that stuff um, it's episode 30 under the canopy maple syrup uh, it's on as we speak. that's interesting stuff you know how where to and how to ma uh, tap maple trees stuff like that that's mm. interesting mm -mm -mm. it's an art the news, Mr. Bowman. Oh, here's a good one here. This is finally, we're getting a little bit of uh, penalty here. Listen to this. Uh, uh, Chinook poachers find $96,000. Whoa, here in Ooh, Canada? In my. Canada. A little bit farther west of us. Two commercial uh, fishers uh, are on the hook for nearly $100,000 after selling almost twice their legal limit of Chinook salmon. In the summer of 2018, on two separate occasions, Adam Monroe and his skipper, Silas Lebeck, Offloaded hundreds more fish for sale in Prince Rupert. BC, that's Prince Rupert, Prince Rupert BC. BC. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they, they appealed the original judgments against them, uh, but the Supreme Court Justice Miriam Mainsville dismissed the appeal. And uh, this is good. It goes on. This is getting pretty good. She says she was not convinced by their arguments, including attempts to use the French language version of the Fisheries Act uh, uh, and a debate over translation to justify their actions. No, hang on. But hang on. From, I, the, <laughs> one of the accused. Hang on. Let me just yeah, see He's here. not the skipper, though. One of the accused is Adam Moore. Yeah, Monroe. Or Monroe. Adam Monroe. Uh, so now I could understand maybe how Silas Levesque might try an attempt to use the French yeah, language got a French name version for sure. so but the other guy he doesn't have a leg to stand on he's not the skipper right he just said uh, I, I don't know uh, I'm, I'm not sure what's going on I don't know the rules I'm just pulling in the fish for Monsieur Lebec that's maybe I wonder what it was in the French language that made that uh well, yeah. obviously, you, you, we went and went through it with a fine tooth comb to try and get away from these ninety six thousand dollars worth of fines. You know what I mean? He he dug doesn't, deep uh, into the into the into the French version of the Fisheries it, Act. It doesn't really say how much weight they had, eh? How much they got caught with? Double? But, did it say double? Dean was it? Yeah, double? it was double. Whatever it was, double, the, the, whatever their quota would have been. Quota, I'm yeah. assuming these this is a commercial yeah. license that they're working on, yeah. right? So whatever they would normally have available to them uh, under their commercial license, they were. Double. So it wasn't even a case where you could say, how did that extra fish get? I got caught one time for that, by the way. <laughs> did how'd you? That extra, yeah. How'd that extra fish get caught, uh, get get up yeah. there in the nets? No, this is yeah. double. So, yeah. you know, so, some of these licenses uh, would have four and 5,000 pounds. I was going to say, at a $96,000 fine, you're talking thousands of pounds. Oh, yeah. Over, oh, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, just sure. a guess, but probably. For sure. Anyways, uh, uh, Justice Miriam Masonville said... Uh, 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 no, you didn't. Mm -hmm. um, yes, so you did. The fact that you may or may not underst have understood the way the act was written and you interpreted in a different language, it does not uh, just... And besides, how do you interpret twice the weight? <laughs> I mean, I can understand a few pounds. Say, I, I, I misunderstood. We're talking twice the weight. 
Yeah, there's, I mean, so. there, there, obviously in any fisheries act, if you look at all, when we go to our uh, rules and regulations here in Ontario, we see you are allowed six fish with your full license. You're allowed four or two with your conservation. It's very explicit as to numbers. Now, that's not the numbers these guys are working with as far as small numbers compared to big numbers. It doesn't matter. It's written in, the, in these, uh, on paper, it's written. Right? I will guarantee you. $96,000 later, let's call it 100000 just for the sake of arguing, $100,000 later, I think they now understand the language clearly. I wonder if there was, did you hear, Dean, if there was anything else, uh, the boat's taken away? No, this, I didn't hear anything. anything the license the story, was taken away for five years and oh, stuff? No, so it, it, had it has to be. It's but it has yeah. to be. Well, I think their license would have been taken away. It would have been taken right. Because sure. this sure. happened in 2018. I can't believe it took that long anyways. Oh, but, wow. But they've probably been yeah, suspended yeah. Courts since Courts are ridiculously think. backed up. Yeah. Ridiculously really backed up. And this is case in point, right? Mm -hmm. The jails, um, everything. The yeah. jails are overfilled. Yeah. Anyways, I don't think there's uh, any uh, need to worry about misinterpreting anything now by these two gentlemen. Their uh, negligence and lack of due diligence is what they got charged with. So good, good on you, Madam Justice, to Come get this now. thing uh, right. This week's fan question comes to us from Randy Jones in Alberta, Canada. We got Alberta. We got Manitoba today. Holy hey, moly! Look at us go, kid. Uh, Randy submitted via email. That would be info at fishingcanada.com. Info at fishingcanada.com. Come on now. And uh, Randy's uh, query is, what is the best each of you individually and as a team have done in a fishing tournament in terms of placing and prize? So I'm going to go with... I don't want to have to go through 10 or 12 or 15 years of tournament fishing. So I'm going to assume you want highlights from our fishing tournament careers, both on our own and when we were together. That's the way we're going to read it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do you want to lead, a, lead the way? Um, yeah. On my, on my own, my biggest payout was a second in the Canadian Classic. And I, I, I hate talking about it because I wanted first and I had the fish on for first and you blah, blah, blah. Had, you should have had first, <laughs> I damn it. So I got, I, I won you know, back way back then. It was like 10, 15 grand or something, which was a nice prize um, for sure. But it was, certainly wasn't the top prize because the top prize was like 70 grand with all that kind of stuff. But the, when I combined that one, so when Ange and I met before that, I fished with Mike Burris and Mike and I in all of our tournaments, including the classics, like that one in the second place, we would split we would split even on everything um et cetera, et cetera. so mikey won the classic i think a couple of years after that and he won uh, a boat motor trailer and 10 grand or whatever that got so uh, I, I got a truck out of that deal so that was a pretty good uh, that was a pretty good prize payout for that for individual but that's about the highest i've ever where was that got. that classic was in kingston and the one i got second was in midland I remember Georgian that because you should have won that middle. Oh, one, dude. Was... I, I, I talked about somebody the other day. I still <sighs> see the fish. That's I had a three and a half pounder. I see him coming through clear water, large mouth. Uh, I had a jig and it just, he opened his mouth and it just, my jig just came flying back at me. And I just said, oh my God, that thing just cost me about 60 grand. And sure as shit, I got back and it cost me about 60 grand. It's funny because back then, of course, we, we were fishing against each other on a weekly basis. But, you know, there was a different camaraderie back then between anglers. And, and when, that happened, I think we all uh, collectively went, oh my God, because if there was anybody that should have won that event that deserved to win the event was yeah. Dodo Head here for <laughs> Mr. Hook Set, who obviously didn't set the yeah, hook Yeah, obviously, day. yeah. I slacked um, off a little bit. but uh, Together. I, I was thinking that the, 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 the pro, again, back to pro bass, you and I and Mike and Reno all split up. Normally it was Mike and I against Ange and Reno. Yeah. You know, we always split up. So one weekend we had two tournaments on a weekend, a set, different tournament Saturday and Sunday. And uh, Reno and I fished Saturday and then Ange and I fished Sunday. And then they all, Mike and Reno and Mike and Ange teamed up too. And I know we got big fish on each of those each events. Day. Each Each <laughs> event of that, we got big fish. So that was a nice little payout and I, the trophies I, and all I, that. And I can't remember how we placed. I was going to say the same thing. I totally We, we, plus, we placed forgotten. pretty good. I think I think we got top tens. I can't remember yeah. how, how high it was, yeah. but with those big fish, because I remember one of them was over yeah. five pounds. Yeah. And then that that's the same tournament where we come back and you're, you're 
we come back to your truck and boat trailer to put the boat on your bass boat on the trailer and your trailer was gone. Somebody yeah. stole it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so we lost money on that deal. Uh, for me, a uh, couple stand out to uh, uh, the, the, the very first Tri Lakes tournament here in Ontario, which was, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Balsam, uh, Mitchell, Balsam- and Canal. Well, you were supposed to correct me if I was wrong. You didn't even give me a chance on that. I remember the tournaments. I still remember so, that. See? So it was, the the at the time, the big tournament because it had three bodies of water that were wide open. They've since changed that now. Uh, they try and keep anglers on one body of water. But back then, we could literally run hundreds of miles to our fishing grounds. And um, it, it was the first one, if I recall, in the Pro Bass Series. And I don't know for sure, but it might have been the biggest comeback in Canadian tournament history because Reno and I were in 15th place. And that's when we first officially met with you and Mike Burris, right? Because we were dejected. Uh, We were in 15th place and we were coming off the water on that Saturday's event and we were in the doldrums. And as we're coming off the water, uh, Pete and Mike had already pulled their boat up and they were sitting on a, a rickety old picnic table right at the launch ramp having a beer. And as we we're getting our boat out of the water, they say, hey, boys, come on over and have a beer. And we said, yeah, sure. And so we pulled the boat up and went and sat down with them, had a beer. And we started, you know, crying the blues uh, about uh, our day. And they were crying the blues about their day. But the one thing I, I'll never forget and I still say it might have been instrumental in what happened the next day. So we're in 15th position, but not just 15th position. We're pretty much out there. I think we had 13, 13 and change. We're under 14 pounds. First place was 19 and change after the first day. And generally in a tournament when there's that much difference, yeah. you're pretty Bye-bye. pretty much toast, right? <laughs> yeah. Anyways, uh, Pete and Mike uh, were, for whatever reason, could have been the beer, uh, <laughs> might have been the beer. Uh, encouraged us, saying, "Hey, you know what? You're not out of it. We're out of it, but you're not out of it. And and uh, all you have to have is a really good day." And and I remember them saying, "If the if the leader has 19 and change today, why can't you have 19 and change tomorrow?" And he 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 goes down. They go down to 13 on their day. So, kind of made sense a little bit. Regardless to say, we set out the next day and we just blew the doors off everybody and won that tournament, the first ever Tri Lake tournament. I remember Uh, that. Still remember that. What a what a a moment in our time. And then the second highlight for me was a big second place finish. I still say we were first, uh, but at that time we didn't uh, think about things. (laughs) But it was an event on Lake Simcoe where uh, Uh, Peter and Mike. And Reno and I, uh, by now we had developed a a friendship on tournaments and stuff. And we used to, it wasn't unusual for us to go out and kind of pre-fish information back and forth the day before. It was perfectly legal. Perfectly legal, exactly. So we would, you know, on Thursday night or on Friday night, wherever we could get together, we'd exchange information. and uh, Which is really nice, just to let you guys know, if you're fishing in tournaments and you have some buddies like that, it's really nice, especially if you don't have anything going in. You say, God, guys, is there anything you can give us? Just a little bit of something a guy can give you. You never know how much, uh, you know, how well that can work for you. So just keep that in mind. So, uh, So lo and behold, it... As it turned out, we were both on our first location. We were both going there because that was the biggest area that we had found that, that had fish. And so, which is not unusual, by the way. So, uh, Blastoff comes and we find ourselves at this spot. Both boats converge on the spot, but there was a local boat anchored up on the spot <laughs> when we got there. And we know it's a local boat. It's a little tin boat with three guys in it, if I'm not mistaken. Anyways, but they knew there was a tournament going on. They might have even been there because there was a tournament going on. I don't know. But they were anchored up on our number one spot. We felt that this spot would have enough fish for both days uh, for both boats. That's how good it was. Anyways, we get there just as these guys are pulling in four pounders left oh. and right, all three of them. There was a triple header going on when we when we came off plane. That's how 
good this spot was. And they were, they had live bait. They had leeches, leeches. if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I was going to mention, if you didn't mention it, I was going to mention it because those leeches so, kicked our asses. And they, and they didn't mind showing the leeches oh, to us too. The leeches, well, the fish, hey boys, look at that well, four pounder. Uh, that'll look good in your boat, wouldn't it? <laughs> Don't you wish you were using some of these? And boom, there they go. Another three triple headers, oh, four pounders. Left right. To the point where I think we were there for about an hour and, yeah. uh, we uh, we uh, we, we just, couldn't handle it. We couldn't handle the pressure. It, it, we that's a case of not being able to handle the pressure, as far as I'm concerned, in yeah. tournament fishing. We just couldn't. But deal. they were annihilating the well, population know, there, anyways. Know, you know what I mean? It was I like, know. wow, they're just beating this thing up to, to a shred, throwing <laughs> throwing back three pounders so they can keep their four pounders. You know what I mean? So it's like, wow. Now Pete's partner Mikey had found a spot in pre fishing. That was kind of marginal, but it was the only other thing that we had, any of us had. Uh, but it was very hard to find. At that time, uh, GPS units were brand new. No, we didn't, no, have, we GPS. didn't have GPS. Sorry. Yes. We had no. no GPS. We navigated yep. by maps, big maps in the boat, right? So anyways, so trying to find it was extremely difficult. But at this point, we were so screwed up. I, we, are, we were mentally, we were out of it right we had nothing left to, to to fight for so we decided let's go and look for this thing i'll tell you very quickly i'll tell you how we found that because i remember this is plain as day so we went mike and i had this in our heads where it was on our map so we said okay guys here's what we're looking for blah 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 so then we we'd run our our fish finders just on the flasher screen i said all you got to do is look for eight to 12 feet of water guys go keep going we'll do a big grid here we'll just do grids like a tic-tac-toe grids and all that kind of stuff and when whoever finds it yell at the other guy because we're going to be there and i said and that's the way we found and it and that's what happened so we finally find it it's in the middle of 65 feet of water so it was very difficult and the only thing that was there was this one little rising little island that topped out at 12 or 13 feet i believe at the time mm -hmm. anyways we finally find it it's now noon and our day is pretty much shot but at least we found something that we could fish and oh my god it was just <laughs> reno put on a clinic that's all i can say is <laughs> reno put on a clinic with us it was everything you weren't supposed to do in small mo fishing he did it god, and he killed them on he it killed them and of course we we uh we watched uh, them do it. And we we got on board pretty quick. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, oh, and, yeah. Uh, so we waited that day, and we were first and second. And third was not that far behind, but it, it, far enough behind that, to me, it was a no big deal. Yeah. We should win this. The only, yeah. the only thing that was in dispute, as far as the four of us were concerned, was which one of us was going to end up first and which one was going to end up second. Because we were going out to that spot again, yeah. obviously. Yeah. A spot, by the way, that unlike most fishing spots and locations today, uh, was like, t there was no way that anybody could really find it. Let's put it that way. Unless they had stumbled onto it. Yeah, um, I don't think the map even showed it, did no, it? No, it was we not found it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't even know how Mike find, found yeah. it, to be honest Fish with you. Fish finder, probably just yeah. run as we can. Brip, so, you know? anyways, uh, we head out there the next day, and oh my God, it was just because now we have the whole day, right? It was just glorious. It was yeah. absolutely, and all day long, you know, we're pulling in these three and a half, four pound fish and culling them, you know, by 10 o'clock, we were dumping out fish left and right. You couldn't get, there wasn't enough time to call. One, it got to a point where one guy became the culler. We used, yeah. we did like a, an hour each on the culling detail. But anyways, um, and, and before we left, I remember saying, guys, it's just a question now of who's first and who's second, because we kind of estimated our weights were in that 18 pound area, which at the time on that lake was pretty damn good. Isn't that funny? Eh? You hear that now? That's, that's, oh, it's that's nothing. three fish yeah. on that lake now. Yeah. <laughs> And, uh, and you probably can imagine what the rest of the story was. The third place team did uh, pull off a Hail Mary pass. We don't know quite how, mm -hmm. although later in life we had some ideas how. But uh, regardless, uh, we were second and third, not first and second. Yeah. But, and I remember that one so clearly. It was a memorable head. tournament for oh sure. My it was God. fun. It was just yeah. a fun day, a yeah. fun two days in the water. Yeah, that was a blast. <laughs> and we learned a lot from that day too um you know we learned that uh that working with others and making the tournament more about learning 
how to fish, learning how to find locations, learning all of that was far more important than chasing the ring, you know, chasing that ring for free. Because if you take care of all those other things, chasing the ring becomes a very real possibility. And uh, you, yeah, you it, taught me the one thing that I learned in that tournament, the biggest thing that still stays in my head to this day, and I remember as plain as day, do you know what it is? You think you remember? Well, doing Anything less? No. Dragging? No, no, it's nothing to do with that. Uh, that you don't have it's to fish, have light, it's, light no, tackle? No, nothing to do with that. It's, uh, it's a, about fish attitude and weather. Do you remember anything about that? Oh, God, no. So that Saturday, as we're sitting in our first and the second storm. place, the thunderstorms that came through that night were ridiculous. It was the most Bad. loud cloud like that. And I got up the next morning, and that's all I thought of. Was, I was going to affect you, the fish, and I said to Ange, I says, dude, what are we going to do out here? He said, what do you yeah. mean? I said, you, not, you saw what was going on last night. He says, don't worry about that. That's nothing. And sure, and sure as, as hell, <laughs> that we was not. And you, and, you, and you know why I said that? You know what? What I, I really believe we were going to have a better day on Sunday than we even did on Saturday, which we did. But you're right. There was a horrendous storm oh, move through. Brutal. I mean, it was. You, it it, it, it woke you me. up. Yeah. It woke you up in the middle yeah. of the night. The reason I was convinced that they were going to be there is they had no choice. This place was so isolated in the middle of a big lake yeah. with with so much deep water. Yeah. I was thinking, my in my head, I was thinking all we're going to have to do is go from fishing the very crest, which we did the first day. Yeah. We're just going to have to drop off the sides a little bit. And yeah. they're gonna. Where are they gonna yeah, go? Yeah, Out in the ocean? There. They're not gonna go in the ocean. They're gonna. They're gonna hunker around this mound. Yeah. Right? I wasn't worried about them leaving. I was worried about their attitude if they were gonna bite yeah. or not. That's yeah. the only thing I was worried about. And man, man, they bit the next day. It was different, <laughs> but they did bite, man. Oh, what a great experience. Yeah. Good. Uh, there you go, Randy. Hopefully that answers your question. Uh, for the rest of you out there that. Uh, would like to join in the fun, just uh, make sure you send a message out to info at fishingcanada.com. And uh, uh, Dean, uh, Dean, Dean, our Come dancing machine, thank you, uh, will uh, uh, make sure that uh, you get in the queue. Or Facebook or Instagram as well on our socials. Do we get many from that, Dean, or no? We have been lately, actually. Okay, yeah. good. There you yeah. go. Three ways of doing it. Hi, everybody. It's Toronto Sportsman Show time, and the entire Fishing Canada Outdoor Journal podcast crew is going to be there. That's right. We'll be in-house hosting live podcasts, interacting with listeners, and fielding questions from you, our audience, all weekend long. You can get 15% off your admission price by purchasing through the link on fishingcanada.com. Spend a weekend with us at Canada's premier event for outdoor enthusiasts, the Toronto Sportsman Show. Now, I'm going to The humble goldfish, everyone's favorite aquatic pet. It's small, easy to care for. What's there not to love? Even the cat may be mesmerized by the color and movements of your aquarium friends. Goldfish are great at home, but don't let them loose. Releasing goldfish or other domestic aquatic pets or plants into natural environments is harmful to both your pet and the planet. Goldfish disrupt ecosystems by outcompeting native species for food and resources in degraded habitats. They contribute to algae blooms, they kill aquatic wildlife, and pass viruses and diseases contracted in aquariums to wild fish. They could even live up to 40 years and grow as big as a football. Anglers, this is where you come in. If you find a goldfish at your local fishing spot, report it to the Invading Species Hotline or go online to eddmaps.com. Remember to never dump your live bait into the water and risk spreading other aquatic invaders. Keep our lakes free from invaders and don't let them loose. Back in 2016, Frank and I had a vision to amass the single largest database of musky angling education material anywhere in the world. Our dream was to harness the knowledge of this amazing community and share it with passionate anglers just like you. Thus, the Ugly Pike podcast was born and quickly grew to become one of the top fishing podcasts in North America. Step into the world of angling adventures and embrace the thrill of the catch with the Ugly Pike podcast. Join us on our quest to understand what makes us different as anglers and to uncover what it takes to go after the infamous fish of 10,000 casts. The Ugly Pike podcast isn't just about fishing. It's about creating a tight-knit community of passionate anglers who share the same love for the sport. Through laughter, through camaraderie, and an unwavering spirit of adventure, this podcast will bring people together. 
Subscribe now and never miss a moment of our angling adventures. Tight lines, everyone. Find Ugly Pike now on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever else you get your podcasts. All right, the big moment is upon us. Well, you're We're excited for here. Oh, our favorite you. guest of I told you. Uh, 24 so far, right? I, don't, I can't remember when I've been more excited for a guest. Uh, good. J- joining us now is uh, one of the, and I'll say forefathers, and I'll explain that in a moment, of the Fishing Canada show. Uh, we've known uh, this gentleman for the better part of our adult lives and worked with him on most of the, throughout most of that uh, journey. Uh, he is uh, one of the first editors of the Fish in Canada show, uh, an animator, uh, first animator of the Fish in Canada logo. Yeah, that's and, right. Creator, uh, that's right. Yeah, creator of the logo. Yeah. And now uh, he is the owner, a uh, co-owner of affordable glamping luxury uh, called the Maynooth Station Lodge. Ricky, how you doing, brother? <laughs> Hey, it's good to see you guys again. You I just too. wanted, for the record, hello, I'm up there. Hi, I just want to point out uh, that logo. I designed that logo. That's, uh, that's right. That's what we were just saying. Well, that's, so, that's, so the Fishing Canada logo, right there. That baby that everybody yeah, sees. Yeah, right Outdoor Journal Radio. Uh, uh, absolutely. Oh, my God. So, yeah. Really? Hey, good man. Yeah, Outdoor Journal Radio. Rick and I collaborated on that one, on that entire process right. with the uh, with the book, Rubber in the Clay Bed. Oh. Oh, like I that remember was, that. That was a process. Yep, that that right. was real clay that that Rick laid out in a big box, like yeah. a sandbox, yeah. and then and then we kind of had to figure out how to get it to move. It was crazy. It was yeah. Crazy. I had our yeah, kitty litter and our hair dryers to blow the <laughs> desert sand. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> how would that, Ricky? Very quickly. How would that compare to, to nowadays? Would that be an easy logo to build nowadays with all the fancy oh, computing? You, stuff? No. Yeah. You couldn't compare. We were uh, Angelo and I. We were doing. We, we were doing some pretty innovative things back then <laughs> right on like floppy disks and Amiga computers. It was, you can't even compare it. I could literally take my phone out right now and probably recreate that whole thing between what phones can do and oh, yeah. AI. And wow. just, we could probably do it in an afternoon by wow. the end of the call today. But you know, <laughs> but you know, back then it's not like, it, it, like we were completely. Oh my God. When we first saw it, like, you guys said, guys, okay, everybody come on here, take a look at this. And we're all looking and saying, what the hell just we happened? We literally, I remember literally sitting in that big Quonson hut we had back at the yeah. property. At the old dome. Yeah. thinking okay how do we do this and and we literally came up with all of that technique over an evening if i'm not mistaken after work right, yeah. one night and for everyone watching if you go to the your, your youtube page you've got the outdoor journal shows on there and they can see for themselves and it yeah, holds yes, up well i've watched them yeah 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 it does hold, it hold up well. well yeah and the leaves coming in and all that, that was That's cool it. man that was awesome <laughs> anyways there's Good a million, work, boys. Good million work. things we need to talk <laughs> about uh before we get into that uh at some point we're going to talk about this new venture which is I guess the real reason you're here, maybe for everybody else, but not for me. Uh, for me, I just want to walk down memory lane with you, buddy. But uh, you've got a new business uh, called the Maynooth Station Lodge, which I, I'm really excited about. Uh, I was privy to some of this way back when you were just conceptualizing it and uh, thought it was great then, and I think it's even better now. So I want to make sure we leave enough time for that. But before yeah, for that, sure. Sure. I do want to walk down memory lane and... We're probably going to have some differences of opinion as to what, when, and where. Uh, 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 there's not sure. a there's not That's a whole fine. lot of documentation that would substantiate most of what we're about to talk about. But from my perspective, and correct me when I'm wrong, not if I'm wrong. When I go offline, here. <laughs> whoa, Ricky! So wow, did everybody get a timestamp on that? <laughs> Angelo Viola admitted he might be wrong. Whoa. You you were here. As an editor, prior to our existing Joe Gorskowski editor, who's been here forever, since the beginning of time, but you actually preceded him as the editor on the Fish and Canada show, did you not? Or not? As a matter of fact, yes, that's right. Okay, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, what happened was you two flip-flopped positions with another company. Am I right? And that, yeah. that other company is uh, Creasy um, Video something or other? Am well, I, right? I was working for, uh, yeah, reseller at the time. I was doing uh, tech sales. Tech sales, yeah. Okay, so somebody, uh, uh, you went there, Joe came here. That's how I remember it. That might have been it, yeah. Okay, all right. I just, because it's been bugging me. I've been trying to 
see if I could remember it accurately, but that's what happened. Rick went there and in turn, and he went there to replace Joe and Joe came and uh, replaced, replaced him. him. Yeah, okay. So that's, no, the other way around. Yeah. Joe replaced me or. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Now also correct me if I'm wrong. I first met you the prior to any of that happening. I met you. Wow, we're going we're going long. Going deep, buddy. Man. I met you. I remember this a, day. I remember. Dreary, are you, you going to tell me about uh, my living room in Mississauga? On a dreary I want to say a wow. February, January, February day I drove to Mississauga yep. to meet you yep. because you were working on some cutting edge stuff on something called the Omega Toaster. Am I right? Uh, Amiga. But Amiga. Yeah, that's exactly tell us, it. tell us about that. Well, I mean, we, we talk about floppy disks and the early days. I mean, I was doing some uh, pretty innovative stuff uh, in with the Amiga and 3D animation, which really wasn't a thing. Um, I had I was running a film festival actually at the time. That's it. That's it. Focused yeah. on on computer animation, and one of my films ended up being uh, accepted uh, into a. A, a film, another film festival in Ottawa, which is actually the um, Museum of Science and Technology. They had a, a computer animation festival and they invited me to come up to Ottawa to present one of my films. So fun fact, if you go to the National Archives of Canada and type my name in, gosh, Ange, that would have been what was 1990, that? 1990, 1992, maybe. Yeah, I'm in <laughs> the National Archives, my film Two wow. Bits. And uh, so that sort of buzz and I was putting out a newsletter and this was of course, before the days of the internet, um, somehow we connected. It might have been my newsletter I sent out. Uh, I don't know. And uh, you made the connection. And Angelo, to your credit, um, you, you you saw something. I'm not saying I'm particularly particularly Pixar talented, but you saw something that applied to the work that you wanted to do. Right. And again, no one was really doing it. No, so no. Uh, here is you with this vision of what, um, the Fish and Canada show with some of the sonar animations we wanted do to do that? and the Magavision project and all these yeah, things yeah, that yeah. like Magavision. No, no words. And then I'm here with like, you know, an award winning animator with time on my hands and we connected and it was just, that, that was 19, let's call it 92. Wow. 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 Magavision. I forgot about that one, buddy. Holy <laughs> mac. Remember that? Oh God. Do I remember that? Yeah. 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 <laughs> And, and yeah, I remember driving up and finding you, uh, your apartment and coming up and we had uh, peanut butter, hot peanut butter cookies out of the oven, if I'm not mistaken. Damn. Damn that's is good. right. Yeah, that's and good. Uh, we talked about our futures together and we talked about my vision of what I wanted to see in our industry of all that's places right. in the fishing show television business i wanted to That's see right. animation i wanted to see the wonderful things that you were doing and and to see how we could collaborate and bring them in how in, old in. is our our youtube uh, how far back does our youtube dean do you know or anybody do you know how far back our youtube goes does it does it go way back to start my rick's first animations or anything like that mm, i don't are you our youtube station a yeah, channel? our no. channel. We should, we should no, try and Rick put was, something on there to, to show the, you know, know. the very first of it because I remember I'm picturing those logos and everything and the animation coming in and it was so cool though. You know, back then it was, it was cutting edge. Now it I think we have like, the caveman one. Is that the one you're talking about? Oh, the caveman. The caveman. That's animation. part of it. That's on YouTube. Yeah. Okay. That's a great one. <laughs> on Fish in Canada. <laughs> yeah. So there you go, folks. You go to Fish in so, Canada YouTube and take and check out something like that. It's uh, that's what Ricky's work was. It's pretty good, man. It, like it's it's good. It, it was really good. I think now we should bring so that good. back. I love that one. I know. Oh my god, yeah. it was unbelievable I know. and what i loved working uh, with you rick and and still do to this why we're still here we are almost 40 years later still working together and collaborating on yeah. things is that in all honesty and, and i've had a i've had the privilege of working with some uber talented people in my career yeah. very fortunate thank you um, yep. <laughs> <you're right. laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> but i have to say you are probably the only one that i connect with that we don't have to do a lot of explaining we get it mm -hmm. right when when we talk to each other we almost talk in pictures as opposed to words because when you yeah. say something i can see it clearly you, you you the way you articulate it it just paints a 3d image in front of my mind and vice versa we've always been able to do that and that's what's kept us together yeah. all these years uh that and you work so well off the cuff that you know, is ricky right there that uh, is that dean, is ricky dean asked me um 
And we're going to play. I'm assuming we're going to play yeah, some of these. Dean. I have them on the board. Uh, Dean asked me earlier on about you know because we did a lot together on radio uh, for a number of years. Uh, people may not realize you also worked with me on radio, but you would come up with these little little moments on the radio where you would just before we'd go to air, you know, maybe the day before you'd say, "Oh, by the way, I I, I built a couple of pieces that we're going to air on on Saturday when you do the live radio show," and. I don't think there was ever one that I listened to and said, no, no, absolutely not. Everyone was absolutely brilliant. And I, I didn't have anything to do with it. You just came <laughs> up with this stuff and produced. Well, can we hear some of the Hans and Franz or Hans some, of the, Franz? some of the little pieces that yeah, Rick, uh, I've got came a couple of good ones here. All right. Time once again for the Outdoor Journal radio show Nature Moment. This week. The mating rituals of the Canadian mallard duck. Oh my God! I feel so good. Oh yeah! Oh, oh yeah! Oh yeah! Who's your daddy? Who's your daddy? Oh my God! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! And now, oh my. back to the show. <laughs> Like he just that was good. These I things would just one. drop in out of out of the heavens, and they would. What did the was, uh, What did the radio station at the time, Fan Five Ninety? Did oh, they take offense they, to that? No, they, no, they liked it. They, they it was the them. only thing on the Fan Five Ninety that had life, that had thank God, that I mean, had energy. <laughs> that, that, yeah. I mean, all, and to this day, I mean, a lot of the guys that I talk to still from back then uh, <clears> remark <throat> about those moments, yeah, those yeah. special moments. No, they're great. Just wonder sometimes, and, right? And the the part I have to come clean and, and throw right out there. Those were 110% Ricky. Oh yeah. Like there was nobody else involved in those from concept to production, to uh, narration. The voice was Ricky's as well to the composition, to the packaging and the delivery. And, and, and back then also you were the, you were the technical producer of the show as well, right? So it was, it was, it was all Ricky, man. And here I, uh, whenever I go duck hunting, I'm doing that. Quack, quack. I, little did I know that's a bunch of bullshit. That doesn't work with the no. You know, <laughs> who's your daddy? <laughs> yeah. And then of course there was a series that you did. I think we have one of them, uh, the Hans and Franz series, which became uh, uber popular with the audience. Franz, that was a good workout. You look tense. No, Hans, I'm not. Maybe a little back rub, some oil. Hans, it's okay. Here, I picked out some music for you. How about something a little less relaxing? How about the Outdoor Journal radio show? Ooh, I love these guys. Hey, guys, you look a little tense. <laughs> this stuff was brilliant, man. That's I used good. to, I used to laugh when it. Oh no, kidding! Because a lot of times, the, when they first played, I never, I didn't hear. I heard them with the audience, right? right? I was, was going to say that'd be the best moment if you didn't have to if you didn't have to hear him ahead of time, so Ricky could throw it at you and surprise you that Saturday morning. That'd be the best, right? So, how did these things come about, Ricky? What what what? Talk to us. Get let us in on the secret. How does this stuff happen? Well, it's it's really just like you said. It's listening to you, and you were you were working out an idea of what the outdoor journal radio show might be, and it wasn't just fishing, or it wasn't just hunting it was appealing to sort of the outdoor adventurist for right. example and someone who is um <clears throat> uh at maybe athletic or uh, out in the outdoors which could not be further from you angelo so <laughs> <laughs> thank you a, ricky <laughs> that was a dig on you because uh, you know um you know funny. you know out of frame is like a starbucks latte you know just out of frame sometimes that, you know yeah, yeah, yeah. a lot of but, times in frame yeah. too nowadays yeah. yeah. So we've got this, uh, this mystique around outdoor adventure. So I, I picked up on a few, a few themes. Hans and Franz was oh. my play on sort of like the Telmark skiers, the, 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 the adventurers out in Sw Switzerland that are just conquering the world. And that was, that was a play on that. And if we have a chance, of course, there's our Australian adventure. Oh, that's, um, got it we got to play that coming up as well. So let's, maybe let's, we, maybe if it's queued up, we can we can listen yeah, to the outdoor adventure from Australia. And again, that's a play off of you, Angelo. I'm basically okay. making fun of you. Thank you. <laughs> Good day on the alligator hunter. On today's show, I'll be exploring the outback of Australia and visiting a highly possessive family of freshwater crocodiles. Look, there's a pack of them now, and I'm gonna sleep them tonight. Ah, she's eating me alive! <sighs> All right, here we have the Venezuelan anaconda. At over 45 feet long, it can swallow a cow. And I'm gonna wrap it around my neck. Ah! 
Get it off me! <laughs> All right, then. The Indonesian Komodo dragon. Its venom is deadly to any animal on the planet and can kill a man in three seconds. And on today's show, I'm going to kiss it. Ah, my face is falling off. <sighs> what a great show that was. And look at me. I'm still alive. Between you and me, I owe everything I know to the Outdoor Journal Radio Show. Till next time! <laughs> and I've been assured that is a horrible Australian accent. Oh, Wouldn't even pass for New Zealand. It's not that bad. But, you're close. But that's <laughs> what makes it brilliant. Yeah. yeah Those yeah, pieces. I got moments. I got enough you moments got to moments. make it funny. Moments. Same, same with yeah. the Hans and Franz thing. It was close <laughs> enough, but but yeah. but campy enough that it just made the whole piece yeah, 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 fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Is there Pedro Piranha? Is there Pedro yeah, the Piranha I got, one? I got him too. I want to hear that. Oh. Hey, I'm Pedro the Piranha, and I love Canada. Hey, you, get out of my way. But I'm not terrorizing young, plump, fair Canadians. I'm listening to the Outdoor Journal radio show. Hey, sweetheart, come over here. <laughs> so racist, it's horrible. But uh, it, this is a good example, though, of, of how I would pick up on, on something, Angelo, that you would maybe mention. Yeah. And if you recall back in the... Back in the day, I don't even know when this was originally recorded. Someone in Lake Simcoe had released a bunch of piranhas That's in the lake. That's it, right? That's it. And, and this was one of the news stories of yeah. that week. So I just picked up on that and created this. Do you know Mexican piranha terrorizing plump young fair Canadians? <laughs> uh, I think one of the best pieces you ever did. Unfortunately, we can't find, and I know you've looked as well. Oh, I know you. Yeah, it was for that year. Uh, yeah, that episode was the. Um, opening of trout season uh, around the province right and it was the week before trout season opened and it depicted hans uh going into a small little uh, general store complete with the little bell at the on the door and um trying to find a set of uh, waiters just uh, waiters yeah, yeah and it was just hilarious <laughs> but unfortunately i don't know what happened to it it just disappeared yeah when i looked hard for that one like, yeah, there weren't enough floppy disks at the time. How, <laughs> um, how long did you, were you the technical producer on, uh, on Outdoor Journal Radio? Do you re recall at all? Well, I mean, several years. I, mean, I know I it was really dur during the Barkley days, right? Because we were Barclay producing it store, from yeah. up in the uh, gallery up above the store overlooking yeah, the store a few years for sure yeah, yeah absolutely we got so we got our groove down and oh, every gosh. saturday morning fired you all know, up if only people could have seen us behind the scenes for for the uh inception yeah. of the outdoor journal radio show because there we were we knew nothing about radio let's be honest um we had a lot of mickey mouse little gadgetry and and mm -hmm. and you know equipment that we had cobbled together Exactly. And uh, we, uh, you know, I still look back at those days. How the hell did we even get off the ground? How did, how are we today? Here we are almost 40 years later celebrating the brand via podcast. How the hell did we even get it off the ground? Well, you know? my question goes back just, even further than that. When you guys were thinking, when you and Reno were thinking about this, what made you start a radio show? And then why did you not do Fish in Canada radio? There must okay. be something to that, right? So what happened was uh, Glenn Goldup, who was a former NHL hockey player, um, got a hold of, and, and he was a Fish in Canada viewer, right. got a hold of us. And at the time, um, the fan was not part of Rogers. It wasn't even part of a network. It was a small little... Uh, downtown Toronto, a station on Holly Street in the bowels of, of Toronto, a little, little side street. And uh, they had a, a sports, uh, it might have even been, if I recall, it might have been Canada's first <coughs> all sports AM station. But it was just I a station, so. not a network. That's Anyways, right. uh, uh, one thing led to another with uh, Goldie. And, um, and I know if there's anybody listening to this from those, that era will probably say, well, how about me? I was involved in that, but unfortunately I can't <laughs> remember. Uh, there were, there were several other people involved, but they said, Hey, why don't we do, you guys are really good on, on the show, uh, for television. And I think we could translate that to radio, but we'd like to expand it beyond. Right. 
Right. And we had just finished coming off of, or maybe we were still in the midst of doing outdoor journal television right. at the time. And we said, well, why not? Why don't we do it as outdoor journal and just make it radio? And okay. they said, yeah, that'd be a great idea. And that's how we made that transition. But the original outdoor journal radio show, I'm thinking for the first year or two was hardcore fishing. Right. Right. And we just yeah. slowly expanded it to yeah, more of a sense. general yeah, audience. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. But that's, it was originally fishing, but, okay. but because we wanted, we knew that eventually we were going to get away from just fishing. And yeah. because we had outdoor journal television, either running parallel or was at the end of its run with CBC, maybe I, I'm thinking that mm -hmm. at that time, um, we said, let's make it outdoor journal. And that's, cool. that's how that whole, and then of course, you because, didn't say why you started a radio show. You didn't say why. Because <laughs> because Glenn Goldup approached us and yeah, said, hey, let's listen, do it. I, think, yeah. I think you guys need to be in radio. Okay. Glenn was the ultimate salesman, as yeah, you probably knew later Glenn. on. He's you good. Met him. Yeah, Goldie. Yeah, uh, he was good. Yeah, you're right. For those of you listening, uh, Glenn Goldup was, uh, oh, I know he's going to hate me if he's listening to this. He was a right, turn it backwards. He was a right winger for the <laughs> Los Angeles Kings. That's where his career started in the NHL. And then... Uh, it was relatively short lived, and you went on to uh, sales, which most <coughs> hockey professional hockey players at some point do turn into salespeople, yep. and uh, and then he was okay. ended up with this little obscure little station called the Fan. Right on, and that's how uh, how this whole Goldie, good guy. Oh my God, we we've spent some time <laughs> oh, with yeah. him out in the water. And he's a, oh yeah, he's a uh, character, quite the character. Great <laughs> stories from him too, but yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, Ricky was working on the Fish in Canada show at the time when this all started. So uh, he didn't have anything to do with his Saturdays and weekends. So I said, why don't you do the show? All right? That's how it all came to be. And, uh, yeah. and here we are now, like I said before, some 40 years later talking about it. And that's great because uh, it's been a, a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful ride. If, if anybody that, remembers the... Uh the ice fishing animation that we did at Christmas time. <gasps> Rick did all that. Aww. That was a classic that we keep re, uh, you know, reusing yeah, year, every, year. every year. We use it and everybody <laughs> comments on it. Everybody loves it. That's a Rick Delishney <laughs> right there. Uh, an original Rick Delishney. We interrupt this program to bring you the much anticipated bonus code for the latest Fish in Canada giveaways. This week's code is YURT. That's Y U R T, all capital letters, YURT. Just type that in the bonus code section of the contest and receive 100 free entries towards all our current giveaways. For those who haven't entered yet, what the heck are you waiting for? Head on over to fishingcanada.com while you listen to the rest of this episode. Click contests and sign up for all the latest Fishing Canada giveaways. And now, back to the show. Correct me yes, if I'm are. wrong. Correct me <laughs> if I'm wrong. We've just we've just uh, touched on I don't know four or five professions and <laughs> and or areas of exp expertise that most people would die for. But I really think that in at the end of all of this, because I, I and I personally know that at one point you had expressed to me um, this, you really wanted to be an animator full time. Like that's what you wanted to be. You wanted to be one of those guys at Disney. And if I'm not mistaken, you either applied for it or you were talking to me about it. Twice you applied for it. There you go. I remembered. Yeah. Twice you applied to be an animator uh, at Disney. At Pixar, yeah. yeah. I got two rejection letters. Up on the wall, yeah. No kidding. You wow. got <laughs> oh, yeah. back in the days of mail. So, Absolutely. But yeah. Why would they just quickly, Rick? Did, what was their excuse? Because in our opinions, you were the best of the best. What was their excuse no. for the, that they used on you? Would they just say no? We're full. We don't have. You know room what? For you? It's 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 the industry. The industry. I would consider myself in the animation world a generalist. So and you could come to me with an idea, and I'd be like, Oh, they're gonna. It's gonna look like this. It's gonna sound like this. We're gonna light it like this. It's gonna have this pace and. I'm going to edit it like this. That would be the role of a generalist. And um, certainly with Pixar and, and with video game development too, you have these specialists like a right. good friend of mine, a good friend of mine does teeth. He models and animates 
teeth and mouth shapes. And that's wow. his gig. And that's all he does. And, and oh. if, if, if you can watch paying attention to the interview and with Angela going over my past 20 jobs, and we're still going to talk about a few new jobs. Like I, I, I couldn't. Wow. Professionally, they don't really look for generalists like right. me. They look for specialists oh, who could do quite, something. Yes. And I guess there was enough information in the application that you would have sent them for somebody to read through that and say, you know what, this guy would not be happy doing what we need him to do, and that is be one dimensional and just specialize in uh, specialize. Yeah, whatever, that'd be fair right? to say. And mm -hmm. and you yeah. always portrayed yourself as is the guy who, and that's why I love loved and love about you is that I don't have to like you come complete with water. I don't even have to add water. You have, you come complete. The package <laughs> package just needs a place to not, sit. Not only that, Rick actually shot some fish in Canada shows for us. He was the cameraman. Wow. I'm getting to that. Oh, you weren't there yet. I'm okay. To that. I was going to say, um, you, you people have seen his work that way too. Well, so. yeah. Well, okay. I'm the Lord giveth and the Lord is going to take away. Okay. The Lord is going to take away here in a minute. Oh my God. But, Poor Ricky. Um, you, you are too, uh, one, you're, you're a one man show and, and that generally is not what these animation houses are looking for. They need a team player who knows his one spot of expertise is one area that he excels in. And then it's a handoff with the other members. In your case, you don't even need those other members and that's the difference. And, uh, yeah. uh so that's, that's, you would think that that would be a good trait to have, but maybe not in that field. Uh, but it is a good trait to have as far as I'm concerned because, uh, man, the stuff you, you know, we're just trying to remember some of the stuff you came up with and sort of touch on. We, have, we haven't even scratched the surface. It's, uh, mm -hmm. I can't think of, and Rick, correct me if I'm wrong. Did we ever disagree on a piece that you did? Did we ever look at it? And I, like, I don't remember ever poo-pooing anything you did. No, I think uh, you gave me pretty much. I think uh, you, you pretty much gave me the keys to the keys to the the, the what do you call it? You know, castle. You know, yeah. I had license to. And uh, no, I don't. I think we. I, I think you and I would butt heads all the time on on certain. Uh, you know, in the in the approval process, finishing things off. Sometimes we would we would disagree, but it would always work out. And to your credit, you were usually right. I'll, I'll admit that. <laughs> uh, thank you, Rick. I appreciate that. Uh, so Pete mentioned about field work. So as you were working behind the scenes all these years on, on the Fishing Canada show and on Outdoor Journal, we did have one big falling apart on Outdoor Journal. I, didn't even, I haven't decided whether I want to mention it yet or not because it might have no relevance on, on what we're doing today. But, but as you were seeing this from the backside, your interest or curiosity peaked about the front side. And Pete just mentioned that is field work. And for one reason or another, you just, it just never worked out until one day, I think it was the perfect storm. Uh, all of the stars were aligned and the planets and whatnot. In other words, our cameraman got sick and we needed, <laughs> <laughs> we needed Rick to come out in the field with us. And um, I'm thinking the only shoot I remember Rick shooting was Lake Westland Coon. That's it. Is that it? There were, there were, no, there were two guys. There okay. were actually two. What was the second one? I shot, I shot a, a good portion of um, the kids. Uh, oh, right. Your kids. Yeah, the yeah, yeah. Kids. The very first, the very uh, first right. kids. Yeah, the kids not, episode. Not the whole show. I again, I, I picked up the slack. I think yeah, there was uh, something happening where we couldn't. We needed someone to finish that show. Right. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. I think it was the same season where you where you where you dragged me out only for West McCoon, which is about <laughs> it's not that ten far minute drive yeah. that way from yeah. where I'm recording right now up right. north of Bancroft. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, you gave me that whole show yeah. and that was, I really enjoyed that. That was, yeah. that was, that was fun yeah. to do. And do you remember we broke down right in the middle of the <gasps> lake? We had the boat half apart, rewiring the boat and all that. Oh my God. And Gosh. I'll tell you what, what's, you know, what I find interesting is like, I knew I'd be editing this show. So I, I'm always shooting for the edit. Right. Right. And, uh, so the, the boat died you've got sponsors, you've got like, you can't show a boat dying on the water. <laughs> I'm like, no way, man, I'm going to record this. Cause you know. <laughs> I'm the editor on this, yeah. and, and 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 that ended up that moment where uh, Pete, you you hot wired the, it wasn't the trolling motor, you hot or the actual motor. Yeah. Um, that from ended up trolling, in the show from and the trolling what? motor batteries. Yeah. That, yeah. That's what happens in the field, and yeah. and and that's what's great about 
about sort of unscripted television, which Angelo, you were a, really a pioneer on that. Yeah. And, and you're doing that today, this unscripted yeah. sort of drama that unfolds that, um, I, I, you know, you need a good editor, you need a good editor. And I always say, I always say, tell the joke, they like, Rick, do you ever wonder like who would play like you in the movie of your life? And my answer is always the same. I don't care who plays me in the movie of my life. Who's the editor? That's right. Hey, That's going to make all the difference good in the one. world. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Hey, the price of boats right now. If I could hotwire boats nowadays, we could make oh, some money. We make some we? money, no kidding. <laughs> hey. So, so you had brief a brief encounter with the outdoors in terms of uh, shooting it. Um, you went back indoors and never to be seen again outdoors. But my question to you is: with that brief time that you spent there, if you could redo the whole thing over again, would you be outside? doing the field production or inside doing the post? That's a really good question because I'm, I'm always doing something out of doors. Uh, my, wow. the, the thing that I love doing is mountain biking right, right now. Like I, whenever I travel the world, I was at a, a glamping convention in Colorado just a few months ago. And, you know, I rented a mountain bike and I was biking, top of a mountain outside of Boulder. Um, I was in the Isle of Man uh, doing some work uh, out, out that way and uh, rented a bike and went through, they call the plantations forests of the Isle of Man in the Irish Sea. So I do spend a lot of time out of doors, uh, try to keep active and I try to balance the work that I do in sort of, you know, working in technology as well. So it all, I, to answer your question, I mean, I really, it would be difficult for me to pick only one. I'd need to have my probably foot in, in both, in both, actually. In both areas. Yeah. Which, which means, which, well, you know, what I'm working on right now. So, well, you know, that's, that's, really what wanna, we'll, that's what I want we'll to get to that. now, which has all led you to where you are today, aside yeah. from uh, still being uh, deeply immersed in production, a variety of different areas in production, including ourselves. You're, you're actually, uh, you've been working on the Roland Martin show on our behalf for the last little while. That is an outdoor adventure in itself, right? It's just an adventure, <laughs> and a, a, a total adventure, that one, for sure. Uh, Let's just say I'm happy to help you, Angelo, uh, because if I didn't uh, do it. Uh, I, al I always tell people when I tell this story about how Rick has gone from that very first day that I met him some 40 years ago. He's gone full circle and climbed up that ladder. Today he's working on Roland Martin. <laughs> That's a big deal, right? <laughs> that is so but true. But anyways. That is um, so true. Hey, but by the way, a Ricky. Deal. He's a great, he's, it's a great show, and he has so many, so oh many just God. avid fans. He's, uh, a, he's a legend. He's, so it's, he's it's, a legend. It's a real privilege to be the guy behind the scenes there's, on the Roland There's Martin only show. been two editors that have ever worked on um, – Fishing with Roland Martin. Two. You're one of them. Wow. There you go. Look at you, wow. Ricky. There I you didn't go. know that. Yeah. Wow. His previous editor worked with him from day one. They were kids. He got sick or something, didn't he? Yeah. yeah. The, for that, he, the, for, they, they worked together right from day one. And until he wow. became ill, that's Bo, who's yep. his name. Yep. Um, right. He was the only editor that ever touched uh, fishing with Roland. And Roland... Uh, show so yeah uh, you you were traveling in very 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 uh, <laughs> narrow uh, margins there buddy i saw it so. rick i saw it on sportsman channel the other day it looks really good buddy the final product on the television looks i watched great. i just got the end of it looks really good so there you go well that, what i say who, i don't care who's playing in your life who's the editor that's really <laughs> has, has anybody been more influential than i have to ask in the fishing community in terms of production and post-production than uh than their very own Ricky Delishney. Uh, ah, yeah, he's a North American specialist, isn't he? I think Absolutely. so. Absolutely. Which brings us full circle as to why you're here today. So for right. years, as you remember from the radio show, I used to always have this little joke about yurts. Always. Right? I, I always that. used to yeah. say, oh, I dream of one day being able to produce this show. I want to come to you live from a yurt somewhere because I just love the word yurt. <laughs> And, and and lo and behold, here we are. Uh, we're going to talk to you about yurts, but not just any ordinary yurts. So we're what's gonna, an ordinary yurt? Is it a rounded tent, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, a basically. It's not squared off. It's just a rounded tent. I, got the tent I believe it came, originally the word was used to describe the Mongols. Uh, Mon yeah, it's a Mongolian-Serbian Mongolian thing. Mongolian-Serbian uh, thing, right? Kazakhstan, okay. yeah. Okay. So here we are now. 
today we're going to talk about yurts, but a little more uh, up to date. We're 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 going to call them glamping yurts. Take it away, Ricky. What's the business you just started? Oh, hold. On. Let me just pull down my uh, my background here. Let's yeah, if you would. My, there, there you go. go. <laughs> Thank you, Ricky. I love it. That's yeah. so awesome. <laughs> that is awesome, buddy. Now he's in a yurt, just the way I always now wanted I'm in to be. My uh, uh, glamping dome. So, um, what we're building up here in Maynooth, just north of Bancroft, is a village of glamping of geodesic glamping domes, similar it's to what you're seeing cool. on screen right now. So, these are four season. Fully insulated, air conditioning, ice machine, latte machine, hot shower, porcelain yes. toilet, like a proper, porcelain toilet, a proper, Mr. Bowman. I like the latte <laughs> machine myself, to be honest. I'll go to the shit house if I have to, but for a latte, that's no problem. <laughs> you got it, Pete. Um, no, but this is the reason why we're doing this. And my partner Jen and I are, are, are we have some land up here north of Bancroft. We're right at the intersection of B one hundred six E. It's a, yeah. one of the main uh, snowmobile trails and mm-hmm. ATV trails. And then the spur that heads off to Maynooth, which is which has, among other things, butter tarts and the LCB. So we're right on the corner of the intersection of that. And we've got several acres that we've uh, been rezoned. It's been approved for uh, accommodation use. So these domes are similar to what you're seeing on screen right now. Um, they're just over 500 square feet. Wow. They're two stories. Yeah, two stories. Two stories. Two stories. Wow. They sleep up to six people. And like I say, they're fully air conditioned, heating, uh, radiant heating uh, under under the floors, um, plus uh, whatever wow. else we could pack into it. A full kitchen and a beautiful, be- absolutely stunning bathroom. So, okay, wow. you, you, obviously you have electricity. I'm assuming you have electricity or is there some way else you're running it on propane or something else or is it, is it electricity? We've got an excellent um, supply of, of hydro here, so we've got two twenty lines running out to the uh, to the domes, and they're going to run the heat pumps, no and, way. Uh, air conditioning, and the on demand water heaters. You see, the snowmobiling community here is 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 huge in in the Bancroft yeah. sort of Hastings Highlands area. There there are some be- beautiful motels, um, some smaller hotels in sort of north of Peterborough, and then through Bancroft, and then there's really Nothing. There's a handful of hunting camps with no water, no hydro. I'm generalizing, yeah, but yeah. it's pretty rugged. And then when you get to Whitney, of course, you have some some accommodations at the gate of Algonquin Park. True. And we're right we're right literally in the middle of that. Yeah, thank you. Exactly. Is the we're right Manus, in the middle of that. Is the Maynooth Hotel still operating? It's now called a McAlpine house. It's a B and B right that, across from the train station. That used to be the best. Okay. Stayed there a few few oh, nights. Oh, I know what you're talking about. No more. So Aaliyah runs the the um, the the, mo- the B- B- Airbnb. You're thinking about the Arlington, the big purple building. That's right the one. Yeah, yeah. The old Manute. <laughs> that we used place to, is so just beautiful. We used to use it as uh, our uh, drop off point going into Algonquin Park. We would generally overnight there and have uh, a few. Uh, uh, jugs of beer. Jugs. Uh, oh yeah. Well, sure. because because we were going into the park, right? And then and, and in most cases yeah. we would go in with no, with no beer, so you had to kind of fill up. That was the tradition. You had to kind of overdo it <laughs> going in, so you didn't miss it as much when you were there. And then, of course, on the way out, now we're hurting big <laughs> now time. You need for a beer. beer bad. So we would overnight again. Uh, so it was a regular stop. So you're not far from there, Absolutely. huh? No, in fact, that's the, one of our selling features. And we, you know, the community is very small and, and everyone is aware of what we're doing here and we're providing something different. But that, that spur road I mentioned for yeah. the LCBO and the butter tarts, yeah. that brings you right to the Arlington and you got a, you got an amazing pub with pizza and it's wow. really good. The guys that run it are, are just fabulous. So they're, wow. they're I'm that's really, really happy to be a part of this community. Maynooth and Hastings Highlands, um, does have a reputation of being this quirky, artsy, but very, very friendly community at the gateway of one of the most spectacular uh, pr- provincial parks uh, mm-hmm. in Canada. So I, th- I think what you, when are you launching this? Right. So um, we were zoned just last month in January, 2024. So we, uh, when this, when the snow melts, we break ground, we've got all our contractors all lined up, everything's ready to go. So uh, we'll have the first dome up and running Let's say early summer. My dream is obviously to have it open for May two four weekend. So that's that's our goal. Nice. Nothing nice. wrong with having a goal. Nope. Yeah. And then yeah. once that's built, we'll shake it down. We'll get our because we're going to do a DIY. We're doing a lot of it ourselves. And then once we get that working, we're opening up a second dome by the end of the summer. 
And then once that happens and it's churning and we have our snowmobile crowd coming in the winter, this time next year, we'll have two more domes. So a total of four domes that sleep up to six people per dome. Is that your? Is that an, the only room you have for? Or you'd get room to expand upon more if you want. Oh, we've got plenty of room. So yeah. the dream is we've got this huge forest, and we didn't even talk about my time working for the Disney company. So I have a flair for theatrics. So we've got this 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 forest that we're going to light up as our I call it our enchanted forest. So we're building a nice. two point one kilometer loop. That's a hiking loop that's available during the day for light show caching for the kids. And there's some really spectacular. Um, we call them. Um, the, these rock features that in, in all over Bancroft. So we'll build a, a walking tour around that. But then at night, we're going to light up the forest with some pretty spectacular lighting. That'll be a, a, a wave two, maybe wave three thing, but we've got the land. And then once we have this land sort of mapped out, we'll be putting some you know, more family, maybe A-frames. Although what I really want to put in are these, this new technology. It's these uh, mirrored, mirrored homes. Imagine like a storage container, but instead of metal walls, they're, one-sided mirror, two-sided mirrors. So when you're walking in the forest, you don't actually even see the building. Oh, until oh, right on it. oh, oh that's true. You, with you all the tree would. reflections and all that going up. Yeah. That's wow. right. It, it really confuses your eye. And then, but the oh, path leads cool. up to like this, what are you walking up to? And it's the door and you, and you inside, and then you're in a, like a studio apartment with all four walls minus the bathrooms are all transparent. It's a forest. So you're literally in the living in the oh, middle of a Gonquin, cool. a Gonquin forest. Uh, with no bugs and but you'll have running water and the whole yeah, thing. So that's that's, that's down the road. That's down the road. But the geodesic domes are a sure thing. The snowmobilers, the ATVers really want a choice for something again, a little more luxurious. They call it's called glamping for a reason. Yeah. They want something a little bit better. They want to bring their spouse um and you know have a have a have a a, a, a home base that's not a hunting camp with without and again, not, nothing against honey camps, but no. it's it's an alternative to Absolutely. what is out here right now. Ricky, this is we're talking to Rick right now in the winter in February of 2024, the mildest winter we have all experienced right. in southern Ontario. How is the snow yeah. up there? Is there snowmobiling going on in, in Maynooth and Bancroft and all that it's, right now? It's very sad. Everybody is uh, is is hunkered down. It did rain last week, and uh, there's this glaze of ice over everything. It's we're now at zero today yeah. after four days of six degrees. So, and this is devastating for uh, the Bancroft area because it is a heavy, uh, there's a lot of, there's a lot of snowmobile users, users up here and the trails here, especially where we are literally right here on a, on a North South intersection. Right. It goes to Algonquin park and as far as Peterborough. And then you go East West all through Halliburton and Muskoka and the other way to Barry's Bay. We're right on that corner and we haven't heard a snowmobile in two days. It's really sad. Wow. wow. Come on out of the Crazy. dome there, buddy. You're giving me, I want to, I want to be in there oh. crawled up in that blanket right behind you. Come on out of the <laughs> dome for a second. <laughs> Come go. back. <laughs> We're back in a minute. Here we go. <laughs> so it just dawned on me. You're talking about this new um, glamping concept and the domes and all that is perfect for every other outdoor pastime except the one I think that's going to be the most important in your business, and that is the angler. Because yes. I'll tell you right now, anybody going into Algonquin Park and coming out of Algonquin Park this should almost become, through time, a, a staple stopover. Like your uh, what you were just talking about before. Exactly. Your hotel stopover. Exactly. Yeah. We're because literally it's, only it's, a half an hour from Whitney, which would be the East Gate of Algonquin. Right. And, and we are building, uh, with the domes, of course, they do have uh, full kitchens. We're also building a, a, a common cooking area outside. So if you, for even for fish cleaning, we could do that outside in this common area. And then we're, we've got a big uh, fire pit, fire circle. Uh, designed for the center of the compound. I so, think and, and finally, we've got uh, parking for um, uh, six six trucks with trailers. I wow. think the only thing that's missing wow. from that concept, from that idea, would be the Fish in Canada show yeah. to, to <laughs> come up <laughs> and I was uh, experience that. it. Mm -hmm. and maybe see if we can't capture that moment that we all want to I wanna have you guys up for sure. But all your yeah. listeners, it, it, once we come up and running, um, I, I know I'm sure going to be able to squeeze a plug in, but you know me, I'll, I'll try as many chances as I can. The station lodge.ca. 
sign up. And then uh, right now we're just taking sort of pre-registrations. We're not taking any money right now, but to our listeners, let us know on the form that you heard us on the show and we'll get as many anglers up here as possible. I'm really excited to explore that. The, for area, sure. the area that Rick's it's, in, it's for perfect. those that don't really know them, I mean, most of the people in maybe Southern Ontario would know the area, but that Bancroft area, Manute, and that and towards the Algonquin Park, the kind of a, a North and East of us right here, Caladar is not far from there. Yep. There's all these, yep. it is primo fishing in that and hunting oh, yeah. too for sure i mean the deer hunters etc but for fishing wise and i mean for a couple of couples let's just say <clears throat> to me now now it makes sense if me and my buddy wanted to go fishing for two or day, three days we bring the boat and the trailer up the wives want to go up but they don't want to go fishing they got now they got this beautiful little accommodations they could stay at you got so many lakes you could go out on a daily basis yeah, we got, uh, west lacoon of course we talked earlier yeah we got kamenetsky lake yeah um Papineau creek for all these lakes are oh, yeah right right well you and your buddy are out fishing and your wives can be entertained by ricky ricky R- R- ricardo as yeah, we used to yes, call him yes sir uh yeah. he'd be more than happy to You're show him you the area. just wanted to say that didn't you <laughs> hello ladies the boys are gone <laughs> rick do you, here's one thing you're gonna need for fishing you're going to need outdoor 110 volts to plug in bat- uh, boats for batteries. You're going to have that? Yeah, we're going to be running 220 to the domes, and then we're going to have plenty of outlets. Branch. Perfect. And plenty of that's, all a guy, that's all a guy will want for his boat right there, bud. That's it. Mm-hmm. Nope, um, absolutely. I'm with you on that. I just dawned on me that we're going to have to give you a whole new handle because you mentioned uh, DIY. You, you're building some of this stuff yourself? You're working well, on I, I mean, I know my limits and I play within it. So, I mean, we got contractors lined up for the trench work that's going to happen to run the, run the four season water and also the foundations for the dome are critical because these are massive. These are eight meters wide. Don't do it. They're big. They're 550 square feet, eight meters across. And uh, I don't know, 20, four some feet high so we got to get the foundations right and we're putting in radiant heating as well so it's got to be right and then at that point to hand over the actual domes themselves with a couple of people and pete and and i think i might have you guys come up Uh, a couple of people can put it up in two or three days Uh, they're pretty pretty straightforward they're they're lego at that point it's what goes inside and then of course the interior design We've yep. got some vision of what we're going to make it look like. And if you've been on our site, we've spent quite a bit of effort already on sort of the marketing and the color schemes and things like that. So that'll project as well. What's going to be on the second floor? You said there's two floors. <clears throat> Is there going to be yeah. what's on the top floor? It's, it goes over the kitchen and, and washroom, and that's uh, two double beds within a loft with a ladder that goes up to the top for oh the kids God. or, that's or cool. more people. That is cool. What a great idea. From award-winning animator to uh, accomplished producer to... Uh, a cameraman that Andrew didn't really like that his work yeah, that much. it was okay. But, he was all right. Uh, to a technical <laughs> producer of uh, award-winning radio programs. Uh, it goes on and on. Now he's building a, a whole outdoor community and doing some of the legwork and manpower work uh, involved. You are truly the Renaissance man now, officially. I'm going to call you the Renaissance man. Uh, I need my need a nice scotch or something. There you go. There you go. Uh, Ricky, uh, tell folks once again how they can get a hold of you and get more information on this wonderful project. Well, thank you very much, Ange and Pete. Thanks for inviting me on the show. This is so wonderful to come back and connect. Um, the Maynooth Station Lodge. We're across from the old Maynooth train station. It's maynoothstationlodge.ca. Um, Perfect. All our socials are lit up, and I have to give a plug to, to Jen, who's done an incredible job of curating our TikTok feed. I never imagined I'd be on TikTok. I didn't think I fit the demo, but it's astonishing. The demo of our viewers is um, 40 to 60, uh, predominantly, like right down the middle, um, male, female. And we have well over 200,000 views on our videos already. Excellent. And, nice. Good for you. And at 150,000 on, on one of the, one of the videos that basically that, that sparked a little bit of a conversation about the animosity or the ATV riders on snowmobile trails. We touched on that a little bit, not knowing how volatile that was, yeah. but boy, that really, that really lit up our social. So Good. we're on TikTok, um, a new station lodge for sure. And all the nice. other socials, but Excellent. yeah. And uh, then yeah, if you're interested, sign up and uh, we'll just put you on the, on the guest list for when we start taking reservations in the spring. Uh, wonderful sharing a little uh, time with you in, in a, on a on a platform that we've never really done before with you, and that is interviewed oh. you. Uh, we've always worked with you. And by the way, for those of you listening, work, Rick still works on the Fishing Canada show in various areas of it this year, including this year, I was going to mm-hmm. say, yep. an actual episode that he did from start to finish. Correct. 
and uh, it will be labeled as such. Do we remember which episode that was? Anybody? Episode remember? four, yeah, I was. believe. Uh, that's, episode that's, four. My working was episode four. Yeah. Okay. It aired perfect. a couple weeks ago, actually. Yep. So You're still right. very much involved uh, in the Fishing Canada show that he helped us all put on the map. Uh, and we thank you for that, my friend. And we thank you for your friendship. And we will enjoy in your success uh, coming up in this new venture, I'm sure. Well, thank you so much. I'll let you guys know, of course, when we're up and running. Perfect. Thank you, Ricky. Thanks, Thanks Ricky. Take care, buddy. Good luck, buddy. Uh, Rick Delishney, one of the, uh, I, I said forefathers of the of the Fishing Canada show because he was there Two pretty much. Who were the three much. others? Um, Brent LeVictoire. <laughs> I know you're being an asshole, but I can I can always outdo you in that department. Uh, Brent LeVictoire was the original i think todd monroe would have to be considered in that bunch as well uh rick delishney and uh, joe gorskowski i think all four of them in terms of from a, a technical aspect really f uh gave life and birth to what we today take for example sure. right and they, that did, is they all did a good job brand. they, they all did, did a great, great job. job absolutely oh sandy ricky's fun um, fun guys additional uh, uh, involvement, of course, was in the Outdoor Journal radio show or uh, TV show, which which gave birth to this podcast. Yeah. Um, so he's kind of been Man, along he for did the whole everything. Trip. That's yeah. all we can say. That yeah. guy did everything for this company. <laughs> and we've had our differences. I know it sounded like a little love fest oh, there. Oh, you and, and Ricky had some and battles. And we had kumbaya moment there. Yeah, but uh, yeah. Ricky and I, um, as much as we Cage are singular in our... Um, uh, from a creativity standpoint and and but but, but we had we had uh, some differences uh, for sure i was going to bring one of them up and then i thought better of that, it that might have been some good podcast right there i know i know i know i know <laughs> no, i get I you know, i get you i thought well, let's tell you what if we have him on again which we should once he gets uh once we stay in thing, one of his yurts right once, once it opens and maybe we stay in one we'll uh actually what we need to do is get up there stay in one and get them all liquored up one night and then and then get the cameras oh rolling, and then I will bring up our little uh, uh, tete -tete little tete fist that fight had. out in the bush. You guys be walking that one point two kilometer trail. They're chasing each other. That'll be a cartoon <laughs> right there. Anyways, that was great. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. It was uh, it was an off, obviously a great moment for us to. You know, just sit back, take a deep breath, and, and walk down memory lane. Yeah, with, uh, and hopefully people look at Maynooth Station, uh, Maynooth or oh. Manooth. Gonna be, you can pronounce it either way. But Rick and, said it's pronounced both ways, but uh, uh, Maynooth Station I, Lodge. I don't want to understate out. how important that is going to be for the fishery in that area. Yeah. Because in as Gonna much help. as, you know, we mentioned the Maynooth Hotel and all that, there's very little infrastructure up there. Uh, this looks like it's much needed mm -hmm. and it's going to work out really well. Yeah, excellent. Better right, I want to remind everybody that these wonderful, lovely garments that Peter and I are wearing are available on the shop uh, at fishingcanada.com. Give me a hell yeah. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Stevie. Um, along with a multitude of other garments that will be available as well, depending on when this airs and when you're listening to it, you might also be able to buy the stuff uh, at the Sportsman Show Come in on, Toronto now. because we will have a booth Whoa, there. Oh, you're teasing a little bit. Well, eh? and the reason being, I, I just want to throw this out there. Uh, if this does air before that event, which I believe it's going to. Oh, God, it better. Anybody that is within shouting distance of uh, the GTA that has been complaining about the shipping charges on the Internet not just on our site, just internet uh, in general. This is your opportunity to say, mm, there you go, internet shipping charges. I'm going to walk right into the Toronto Sportsman Show this year, and I'm going to pay zero shipping charges on that some bullshit t-shirt. Give me a hell yeah. That's right. Wow. And the lovely Fish in Canada. Uh, uh, what quarter is that? Zip. A quarter, this is a quarter zip. zip. Very comfortable. Full hoodies, uh, track pants, track suits, Lots t shirts, of hats. Hats different galore. colors, hats, galore. hats. Zero shipping charges. That's right, baby. And that are it for us on behalf of the entire crew here at Outdoor Journal Radio, the podcast of Ova over there. Nick actually had the headset on. Look at you. you look lovely a bunch of bullshit. And over there, how do you know it's going to be a bunch of bullshit? You got a headset on. Oh, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> Dean Taylor, the producer on, of this very program. Uh, he's Peter Bowman. I'm Angela Biola. Thanks for joining us, folks. We'll catch you next time. <laughs> <laughs>